All right, it's, uh, it's late fall and I'm out here looking at my pear tree and what do I discover? I discover a uh, canker. And this is fire blight and so I'm going to have to take and deal with this fire blight now in the winter time uh, to uh, keep it from infecting the rest of my tree come uh, springtime. Fire blight in the spring once the temperatures reach above 50 or 65 degrees and uh, the weather is moist um, uh, it can spread through the tree and actually cause what they call strikes all through the tree um, and if that those strikes eventually get into the wood like we have here then of course they can be real real damaging damaging to your pear tree this as a matter of fact is a, a pear tree uh, um, that actually uh, is not prone to fire blight but we've had some years um, here where I live that uh, have been really conducive to the inoculum and so this bacteria fire blight has now become a problem even for the more resistant varieties. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like and uh, I'm going to show you what you do to take care of it. So in the orchard, uh, pears and apples are probably the most affected, uh, most frequently affected by fire blight of course. Crab apples are notorious for fire blight as well. Um, but there's other varieties of plants. Cotoneaster um, is definitely uh, um, susceptible. Loquats are susceptible to fire blight. Um, and so consequently, um, there are some other plants to investigate that you may have in your yard. May very well be um, uh, what they call hosts for the uh, fire blight inoculum. And uh, you may ver very well want to either get rid of them or um, possibly just make sure you plant immune varieties or resistant varieties of pears. Um, the uh, inoculum gets in through the bloom, so as soon as it blooms, if you haven't taken care of any of these issues like we're talking about right now, that's going to be when your infection is going to occur right at bloom time. Well, there are some ways to deal with fire blight, and uh, probably the most effective is to choose varieties that are resistant to fire blight. A couple of names uh, would be Warren, very, very wonderful pear, and then also the Seckle pear, which has a long, long history as a prime dessert pair. Um, the other ways would be uh, investigate sulfur applications. Uh, these would be put on before you see any kind of green on the tree um, in the, in the uh, late fall, early spring. Um, after that, uh, the uh, sulfurs can cause what's called the phytotoxicity, which can damage the, uh, the limbs. Um, also look into uh, antibiotics like streptomyosin if that's available in your area, but also be careful with streptomyosin because the bacterium can build up tolerance to that if you're applying it frequently. Um, always remember that any kind of spray that you put on is always relative to the last rainstorm, so if you put it on within three or four days after you put that on, that application on, and it rains heavily, you will want to apply it again up until you see the least amount of green showing, the little amount of green showing um, in the springtime. So uh, a few tools that I have here that I'm going to be using, of course, is a pair of shears. Then I also have a pair of loppers um, for bigger cuts. Um, and then I have a bleach solution, 10% bleach, uh, mixed with 90% uh, water. Um, you can go up as high as 15 or even 20% bleach, um, but I have that in my spray bottle. And that's going to be because every time I make a cut, if that inoculum is present in the wood, it'll infect my shears, and then every other cut that I make will actually infect that wood um, where I make it. And so consequently, in between cuts, we're going to wipe the blade to make sure that we have kill any of the inoculum on there before we make our next cut. So here's the tissue of a healthy branch. You can see it's got nice color and um, we don't see any kind of um, indentations or lesions or discoloration in the bark. Here is a limb that's been infected with fire blight. And to add to that, if I were to take and just cut into this limb, I can actually see that that tissue is dead. That's dead tissue right there. And so consequently I've got to eliminate this because this is where the inoculum, the ooze will occur in the spring that will actually infect all the blossoms. Now this looks like pretty clean wood too so you know and I really hate to eliminate too much so I'm only going to go back eight inches although if there was a real severe infestation in this tree I'd probably get a lot more aggressive but there's only two spots in this tree where I found that there's a canker so we're going to go back this eight inches and I'm going to go to this outside bud right here 
to uh, train it back up um, on my espalier. We're going to look at going from that point back to right about there. That's eight inches, and this is my espalier. I love this tree. Every limb matters, and cutting this out is going to hurt. But first, I'll spray my cloth with my bleach. Get it nice and wet. Don't get any on my clothes. And then, I'm going to use loppers because this is a big cut. So I'm going to take my loppers here, and I'm going to take, and I'm going to clean them just because I don't know what I cut last time with it. So I'll start off by getting the blade all protected right there. Then I'm going to favor this lateral right here. I'm going to leave that lateral, um, hopefully to be able to train it back up. And then I'm going to cut this just right at an angle, just like that carefully. And I think I'm going to leave that node there too. Boom, eliminate it. Okay. So there, now we've got uh, our blight is off of there. This other canker is a little bit less conspicuous and it doesn't show itself because it doesn't have the discolored wood so much. You can really, really see the deep fissures in this wood. This is a clear indication that there's fire blight and that it's got into the limb. So we're going to have to cut it out too and we're going to go and we're going to take it back eight inches as well. Yeah, and I'm afraid where the point of this canker ends right there to eight inches means that we're going to have to eliminate this entire limb. So I'm going to have to cut it off right there. This breaks my heart, let me tell you. Okay, so first, again, we, do, we did make a cut on fire blighted wood, so we definitely want to make sure that our loppers are well cleaned with our bleach solution here. So that's what we're going to do. Take them get them good and clean because I don't want any more fire blight on this tree if I can possibly help it. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to take this limb right back to here, I'm afraid, because that's right about eight inches. So I'm going to go a little bit, I'm going to go right above there because that leaves, there's a node right here that I would hope a new limb would push from. Okay, so I'm going to go right above there. I'm going to cut it at an angle so that water doesn't concentrate on it during the winter time and cause any kind of infection inside the, the healing wood. But here we go. There we go. So there you can see this wood is definitely infected with fire blight. Oops. There you have it. That's uh, how you identify and uh, treat fire blight. Um, then uh, I'll uh, come back in the uh, in the late fall and I'll go ahead and I'll spray with copper and um, uh, you investigate copper in your area and find out what kind of copper is available for you if you choose to use copper. There's a lot of other um, different remedies out on the market. You can experiment. I always experiment. Um, and uh, then of course remember don't apply anything after you start to see the uh, bud swelling and the green uh, occurring uh, that would cause damage to the tree. So good. Good luck with controlling fire blight.